And hello people, this is your host Iridium Axel here, and this may be a familiar sight for some of you guys. I am playing Terraria, but today we are not doing a regular Let's Play, this is going to be a comprehensive walkthrough. Uh, going from the beginning to the game to the end. Uh, the, so hopefully this will last a while because 1.3 next update is coming out in June or July I think it's June so yeah uh, anyway let's get started so first of all uh, after you load up your world as in Minecraft you want to go get wood uh, to do that you just grab your axe and focus at the bottom of the tree the center bottom that way it takes out the entire tree at once uh, there we go now the entire thing will fall down, and yeah. If you mind this nub right here, or rather chop, uh, it'll only give you one wood and it won't take out the entire tree. So in the beginning you want to get one or two hundred wood, so just find the biggest trees you can and start chopping them down. Uh, I, I think that the chopping is relative to the size of the tree, but I'm not positive on that. So yeah uh let me just continue chopping these few trees and after this one we should be done all right so this right here this orange stuff is copper ore now you will have two variations of copper ore uh each depending on your world uh you have the orange copper which is just copper uh and you will have tin which uh it's is the exact same material it's just going to look different and it has a different name uh also it's going to have different armor and stuff like that these guys they are your first enemy in the game they are just the green slime most basic enemy they don't do much damage but eh, they can be a challenge for someone who's just started to play the game so if you open your inventory by play pressing escape then you're going to have this little crafting bar right here you can scroll up and down or click directly on to one of the things and if you have like a bunch of crafting recipes you can hit that little crafting window here and go straight to it rather than having to scroll down the entire list so what we are going to do here with our first view slime is make some torches and then we're gonna make a workbench all right, so uh, just going to clear out a bit of area here and mine this way a bit. Uh, I want to have our house set up by nightfall. So uh, let's place down our workbench so we can get to workbench. Yes. All right, so hit the crafting wet window and first make yourself some wood armor this is the most basic armor you're going to notice that the wood greaves have no defense but that's that's okay because once you have the full set it will give you plus one defense to make up for it so if you right click each piece they put it in your equipment slot uh, here you have three slots for equipment you have the actual equipment which will give you the buffs you have vanity which it's pretty much just a skin that goes over your actual armor as you can see no stats will be gained and then you have dye and that'll color it if you put in a dye so it's rather simple alright next you want to make a wooden sword it's actually stronger than the copper short sword uh, you may notice that this says superior copper short sword and the reason for that this also says godly uh, wooden sword the reason for that is because uh, each time you create something or find something it has a chance to have a modifier which will give it plus something like plus something pretty much like with this godly wooden sword it gives plus 14 percent damage plus five percent critical strike and plus 15 percent knockback so yeah that brings me up to nine percent critical strike your character starts with a basic uh four percent 
So that's a pretty nice upgrade. Uh, going to make a wooden hammer. Now what hammers do is, first of all, they can change the shape of blocks if you just slap a block with it. And it can also take out these back walls here. Uh, so that, that can be rather helpful. So we're going to go ahead and build our first house, which Mr. Jacob, the guide, is going to move into. So for that, we're going to need a bit of wooden walls and some wood. So uh, build up five blocks high. And you can go ahead and mine out three of those blocks, because that's where your to your door is going to be. Build uh, across and down. It's rather simple. All right, so then you want to start placing the back walls that I just made. Uh, by the way, to use all these crafting things at the crafting table, you just have to stand near it. You don't have to right click on it or anything. So, I've just made two doors, and let me start placing the walls. So, what you can do to quickly place things, or quickly mine things, is if you hit control, it'll turn on an auto place, or auto mine, uh, depending on what you're holding. If you're holding a pickaxe, it's auto mine. If you're holding uh, blocks, it's auto place. So, yeah. Then, just place a torch or two, depending on how big the room is, and pick up that workbench, place it in here. Keep in mind, for like the walls and roof and stuff, uh, it has to be a structure that you built. Not the ground, though. The ground is fine. As long as there's a floor, it should work. So, normally, for a house to be considered a house, for an NPC to move into it, you need a table and chair, but a workbench does work. So, I'm just going to mine this up, place it somewhere more convenient, like right there. So, now we can open the door from both directions, and it's not obstructing anything. Alright, so, uh, right off the bat, we could make a second floor, actually. But I don't necessarily want to do that yet. I want to go exploring. Uh, by the way, each of these walkthrough episodes are going to be about 15 to 20 minutes. So you can expect that as far as time. Uh, we just hit 8 minutes. So yeah, I want to do a bit of exploring as it turns night here. Uh, our guide will be safe in the house that we just made him. Okay, so, first obstacle, water. Uh, make some wooden platforms in your inventory. That way you can go across, just jump it, and you're all good. Uh, small chasms like this, you can just jump there. Uh, the amount of blocks for you to take fall damage in this game is significantly higher than in Minecraft. But it's still not anything to be uh, messing around with. Because this game takes falling uh, quite seriously. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, Alright, so if we continue heading over here, we have more trees. Uh, that was a pot. Broke it with my sword. Uh, heading down to this cave. If you hold shift it will automatically use whatever item you need for the situation you're in so considering I'm hovering over background and there uh, <clears throat> it's going to go ahead and give me torches as the suggested item so uh, I've been a little under their weather so if my throat sounds weird that's why <clears throat> excuse me Alright, so these mushrooms you see here, they can be used as healing items. I, like, there's much better healing items later on, but these are going to be your beginning ones. Alright, here we have another biome. This is known as the Corruption, and 
it is very dangerous for our point in the game. As you can see, it just took me down 20 health in one hit. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn back at this point because we don't want to be messing with this. Uh, not yet, at least. We don't have good enough gear at all. Okay, that's not good. We seem to have a bit of a following. I'm not referring to my YouTube channel. Uh... Uh, that was a blue slime. They do a bit more damage than a normal green slime, but still not much. Uh, okay. Um, so we're just gonna head the other way. Hopefully, we can get to the house in time to, uh, completely avoid them. Because we do not want to be messing around with the Eater of Souls. These guys are rather powerful for this point in the game. Of course, they're like nothing by end game, but just for this point in the game, it's rather hard to deal with. Uh, I'm trying to explain everything I can for people who haven't really played Terraria before. Uh, that's why this is a walkthrough. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to start heading this way. Hopefully, we can run into some night mobs so I can explain that to you. Uh, I'm guessing this first episode is going to be 20 minutes, just to get as much in as I can. So, zombies. They have quite a bit of dis defense for your first time playing. Uh, like I said, they most mobs in early game get like really easy later on. Uh, but we still have to deal with them, so... As long as you have something with enough knockback to hold them back, you should be fine. So here we have a little cavern. These aren't quite like caves. They're just underground things. Like, they're just overhangs. Uh, here, ooh, we have a bunch of stuff here. So first, we have silver coins, which those are extremely helpful. Uh, coins are used to buy things. And you have a special slot for coins. Uh, bottles, those can be used to make potions later. Recall potion, that brings you back home when you drink it. Build, build a potion, increases uh, placement speed and range. 15 minute duration. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to take out these zombies whilst talking about the stuff in the chest. I'm going to have to seal it up. Alright. Aglet. 5% increased movement speed. Now, this is not a consumable, which means you can't use it. Uh, what you do with it is you put it in your accessory slot. The main accessory slot, so it gains attributes. Uh, we have rope, which lets you... Uh, pretty much you can climb on it, because it's rope. Uh going to go ahead and seal us up here. Uh, we have Lesser Healing Potion, which restores 50 life. Much better than these mushrooms. Uh, whenever you take a potion, you have 60 seconds of potion sickness, which means you can't take a potion again. Other than that, there's no ill effects. Alright, so let me mine this chest again, and I guess we'll make some more torches. So... Something you can make with 10 rope is a rope coil. You can throw that, and when it hits something, it will make a climbable rope, which is quite helpful. Uh, just going to avoid those zombies by digging up. I'm using the auto mine currently. So, that right there is a demon eye. Those are more annoying than the zombies. Because, first of all, they're harder to kill. I'm pretty sure they do more damage. Uh, and they're just all around annoying. And bam. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to avoid both of those zombies there. Alright, let's head over to this side of the hill. Hopefully we can find some more chests. And yeah, another chest. Great. So we have some lead bars on some worlds that would be called iron. Uh, so, yeah. 
So that is the second level of item, uh, like ore. So copper would be the first level, copper and tin. And uh, then you have uh, lead and iron, then tungsten and uh, silver, and then platinum and uh, gold. So that's how it goes. We have shine potions, which emit a, an aura of light, which is <laughs> really helpful. Uh, more silver and some arrows. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that eyeball, it's just uh, they have random textures to make it look better. Alright, so uh, now that we've taken everything, we're going to take this chest because chests aren't exactly fun to make. So I like to pick them up. I saw another chest down there, but I want to take out these pots first. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a shine potion so we don't have to continue to place all these torches. Uh, Alright. Now, we have throwing knives. Those, once you throw them, there's a chance you can pick them back up after they hit the ground or hit an enemy. But it's not 100% guaranteed. Uh, so that's why they come in such large amounts. 12 range damage. So they're pretty good. Uh, once you throw them, they can hit twice. Uh, like, they pierce once and then hit again. Uh, so, they're a rather helpful item. Uh, this this episode might actually run a little over on time. Got some more potions. Mining potion increases mining speed by 25%. These are actually really, really helpful. Especially for early game when, you're, when your mining is really slow. So, we definitely want to take that. Another recall potion, those are always helpful. And some more silver. We're approaching 100 silver, and 100 silver equals 1 gold. So, yeah. Keep in mind, gold bars and gold coins are nothing alike. You can sell gold bars, but they won't give you a bunch of gold bars a piece. I mean, a bunch of gold coins a piece. Uh, I'm just placing these torches so that we have sort of a marker. Uh... just going to make a little tiny bridge down right here all right uh here we have cobwebs those uh they make you fall slowly through them uh oh up here that's important to note there is a boulder in there i don't know th that you can see it uh, I'm gonna try and get closer. If I mind this. Active stone blocks. Those are pretty much, uh, stone blocks that can be edited in and out of tangibility based off of, uh, based off of power. So, that is pretty helpful. Uh, those do a ton of damage, so you want to avoid them at pretty much all costs, uh, especially in early game. They do not do as much damage in late game. So, yeah, you don't have to worry as much then. I'm going to grab this lead, and over there looks like we have our first really important item. This is called a life crystal. So, You'll find them, they glisten like this, and uh, it will permanently increase your maximum life by 20. So, you just mine it with a pickaxe and then take it, and it is extremely great. Uh, so, copper, we don't really need it, but I, I'm going to grab it anyway, just because uh, it's good to have large amounts of materials to explain things and show how to craft things. that all right there I just destroyed all those with my pick uh, this right here is tungsten so the equivalent of silver and silver is one step above iron I'm going to 
go ahead and finish mining that. And all right, so now I'm going to go ahead and mine all this lead because lead is actually rather important. Iron is one of the most used resources throughout the game. Like, you end up using it on pretty much everything. Well, not on everything, but you get the point. It's a very useful material. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all these cobwebs. You want to keep them because they can be used to make things later on. Uh, I'm going to need to get some more blocks that or start using all the ropes I've been getting. Alright, looks like this cave is a dead end. Uh, Alright, to attach to a rope, you can just jump up and uh, as long as you're holding up, it will work. So yeah, we've officially passed the 20 minute mark, but I am having a lot of fun recording this. And I'm actually doing relatively well on the commentary side of things, so yeah. I'm going to continue, uh, but generally you can expect these videos to be shorter, around 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, I ran out of time on my shine potion, which is kind of annoying, but you know, whatever. Alright, so it should be... Hello, people! Uh, well, I guess not. Uh, we were just recording a second ago. That was two hours ago for me, though. Uh, sorry about that interruption. That would will have only been like a few seconds for you. Anyway, uh, since then I worked my way out of the cave and now I'm in another. Uh, I explored this cave a little bit, but I haven't taken anything out of the chests because I wanted you guys to see it. <sighs> Gosh, my nose is stuffed up. I have to breathe out my mouth, so yeah. Here we have shurikens. We already got a few from pots. But these are like the throwing knives, but they don't, uh, they don't do as much damage. But they're still extremely helpful because they're cheap to buy from certain units. Uh, and yeah. Also, I got, uh, I got a plant called a day bloom. Uh, what you can do with these, uh, there's a few potions and stuff you can use them for. Here we have grenades. They do 60 range damage, and they, uh, they don't destroy tiles, and they have an area of effect. Thing is, you throw them very slowly, so they, they're a little effective, but they aren't the best. Uh, so I'm just going to stick all my stuff here, and grab the chest, and we'll move down the cave. Alright. Kill this flying eye. Back, back, back. Okay, so continue down the cave. I've explored a, a fair deal. A fair deal. Uh, here, this is all stuff we've seen before, except this. It's a blowpipe. It's slow, which is dumb. But anyway, uh, it. Basically, when you have this in your inventory, whenever you break gla uh, grass, there's a chance it'll drop seeds, and you can shoot the seeds. So that's actually pretty nice. Ah. Alright, so here we have some more tungsten. This is where I stopped exploring. As you can see, there is a life crystal down there, though. Alright, so take that, and we have a bit more life. So that's that sh should hopefully be helpful. 
bit more tungsten, and I guess I'll work my way across this pit. Ah! Ah, uh, I'm going to go ahead and make some platforms. I'm going to have to get some more wood, but that's okay. Alright, let's go ahead mine through here, and... It almost connects with that other cave we were in, but that's where this ends, so I'm just going to head back up. Uh. Alright, there. Uh. Alright, uh, now I can continue. I did not know that you can actually place these diagonally. That's actually extremely useful. And I did not know that was a thing. Uh, so I want to explore a little bit more on the surface before we end off the episode. This is going to be a rather long video because of all the stuff I want to do. Uh, I guess I could just end this episode and start on the next one, really. Uh, I'll do that after we explore a bit more, then I'll get some progress done before we start the next episode, I guess. Uh. Ah. Gosh dang it. These zombies are very aggravating. Indeed. Indeed. O'Neal. Uh, I guess I'm going to stop recording here and come back when I find something interesting. Alright, uh, one sec. Well, I died. So, yeah. I guess because of that, I'm going to end off the episode here. Thanks a ton for watching, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. This is your host, Iridium Axel here, and people keep messaging me as soon as I start recording. Today we are playing Scribble Lots, episode 4.